Awesome. I hear my little bing went off. So I think we're ready to record. I think we're ready to get started. Okay. So let's take a look. Let's take a look here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be looking at rate of change. We're going to be looking at rate of change. We're going to be looking at slope here. Okay. Let me go ahead and first snip this problem real quick. Let me snip a question so we could take a look at it here. Okay. So we could kind of see what's going on. Let's go ahead and take this number one right here. Let's take this number one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the workspace for it. And let's see if we could figure out the slope, okay? We're trying to figure out the slope of this number one right here, okay? So basically, we're seeing this type of problem. They're giving us a graph in this case. But it doesn't always have to be a graph, okay, ladies and gentlemen? It could be different things here, okay? So in this problem, they gave us a graph. And, and the skill is, the skill is we got to find something called the slope, okay? The slope. Let me go and make this pin a little thinner because it looks a little too thick. But there you go. We got to find the slope here, okay? The slope. And the slope, a couple different formulas, okay? But I'm going to write the all of them. I'm going to write all of them because they're basically, it's the change of y, okay? Change of y over change of x okay change of x okay that's one way that we look at the formula okay that's one way people call that formula slope another formula another way they call the slope formula okay another way that we call it is we call it the rise over the run Okay, it's another way we as mathematicians like to refer to the slope formula here. Okay, but honestly, the end of the day, the formula that's on your formula chart is this formula. The slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, that's what the formula really is. Okay. So, you, you know, it could be, it could show us a lot of different things. And, you know, when, when we write the change of y, let me just go back up here real quick. Another way they like to use change of y is that delta symbol here, okay? That delta symbol right here represents change, okay? So change of y over change of x, okay? That's the slope formula that we're going to be using here. Let's take a look at the values that are given to us in this graph, Okay. I hope you see that we have a point given to us. The first point given to us would be negative 2, comma 3, all right? Notice how I'm making the coordinates, okay? These are the coordinates, okay? I'm using the coordinate grid. I'm making the points. I'm making coordinates, okay? We also have another point. We have negative 1, comma 0. That's another point here, okay? Let's say you're the type of person who doesn't like using coordinates. It's fine. You could use a table. You could use a table. It's the same thing, ladies and gentlemen, same thing. It doesn't matter which one we use. But I will tell you this. you got to be organized, and you got to make sure you put your numbers in the correct spots. So, for example, if I were to make a table, my first x would be negative 2, and my first y would be positive 3. Okay, my second X will be negative one and my second Y would be zero. Okay, this is when I made a table. All right. Now, personally, I like to use tables for a lot of my slope formulas. I really like to. Why do I like to use tables? Because we can label a table real nice. Okay, what do you mean, Mr. Legal? This is what I mean. Check it out. My, first, my X1, my X1 in this problem is going to be negative two. Because that's my first X I see in the table. Simple as that. My X2 in this problem will be negative 1. Because that's what we see in the table. Okay? So that's why I like tables. Because they could kind of, you know, help us out here. Okay? They kind of help us out labeling these things. Okay? And let me go ahead and put the other side. So our X1 was negative 2. So the Y1 in this problem is going to be 3. The subscript 1 represents the first point we have, okay? That's, that's what it means. But remember, these go together. Negative 2 goes with 3. That's why the x1 is negative 2, and that's why the y1 is 3. So you could probably already guess what the y2 is going to be. And in this problem, the y2 is going to be 0, all right? So let's go ahead and use the formula. Which formula, Mr. Ligado? Well, this one, the good one. 
this one. This is the real formula. This is the one I'm going to be using all the time. When I ask for slope, I'm going to say, what's the slope formula? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. That's the formula we're going to use. So let's use it, okay? So my Y2 in this problem, notice, look, I'm even going to write it here, Y2 minus Y1, okay, over X2 minus X1. We're using the formula. But now I'm going to put the numbers in the formula, okay? My Y2 is going to be 0 minus my Y1, and I hope you see it, my Y2 is 0. It's right here. It's right there. My Y1 is 3. So that's why it's 0 minus 3 will be the numerator, okay? Now let's look at the denominator here. We got X2, X2. My X2, as you could see, my second X that I had was negative 1, okay? Notice I'm going to bring the minus symbol down. We're going to bring the minus symbol down, and my X1 in this problem is going to be negative 2, all right? And there you go. We have successfully substituted the numbers into the slope formula, all right? Let me go ahead and rewrite it, okay? So our slope formula will be 0 minus 3 over negative 1 minus negative 2, all right? Let's go ahead and start simplifying this, okay? The first thing that we should hopefully do is change the denominator from negative 1 minus negative 2 into negative 1. Notice what we're going to do. We're going to circle these because this double negative basically means the opposite of a negative is a positive. There you go. That's what it turns into. All right. We got 0 minus 3 as my numerator, and we have ourselves negative 1 plus 2 as the denominator. Okay, let's take a look at the numerator, okay? We got 0 minus 3. Notice we got negatives here. And since we start with 0, our answer will be negative 3. Because, you know, it's like we start at 0, we take away 3. We end up with negative 3. Now, the denominator starts at negative 1. But now we're increasing by 2. Which one do we have more of? Do we have more positives or do we have more negatives? Notice in this problem, we only have one negative and we have two positives. So the denominator will be positive. And since they're different signs, we subtract, okay? I hope that made sense. So 2 minus 1 is 1. And so for our problem, the slope, let me go ahead and put it, the slope is equal to negative 3 over 1. And I'll even put the rise and run next to it just so we could see it in action, so we could actually understand what's going on, okay? So check it out. I'm going to go ahead and start with this point, this negative 2, comma 3. I hope you see I'm putting the little dot. I'm shading it in brown, okay? The rise of negative 3, what that really means is that we would go down 1, 2, 3 spaces. Notice I went down 3. My rise was negative 3. That means we went down 3. We went down three. That's what it means, okay? Look at the run. Look at the run. Now, look, let me circle this, and I'm going to go ahead and point it to this because that's what it represents. We went down three spaces from where we were at. We were at negative two comma three, and we had to go down three because that's what the slope says. Now, I'm going to use a different color here. I'm going to use a little purple here. Look at what the run says. The run is a positive one. Notice that the run is a positive one. And that's why on the x-axis, we only moved one into the positive direction. I hope you see it. We moved one to the positive direction, okay? And notice, if we do this correctly, we're going to end up on the other point. Notice we started at negative 2, comma 3. Once we rose down, once our rise was negative 3, we went down 3. As you can see, we went down 3 spaces right here. And then we, our run was positive 1. We went 1 to the right. Guess what? That's what the slope means. The slope means in this problem, we're going to have to go down 3. And we could even see it over here. Check it out. My next point in this graph, even though they didn't give me the point, check it out. My next point will be down 3. Notice I'm going minus 3 here for my rise. And my run, I'm moving 1 to the right. 
Okay, that's the pattern. The slope is essentially the pattern, what's happening on the graph here, okay? Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at another problem so we could kind of see it in action, okay? I'm going to go ahead and bust out number two, okay? And I hope you saw in the first question that we did, the answer was negative. The slope was negative three over one. And you could see, look at the line. If we actually look at the line, the line seems to be decreasing, okay? And I'm going to even write that. The line is decreasing. That's why the slope, the slope is negative, okay? Because it's going downwards, okay? It's going downwards. As we look from left to right, if we were to read from left to right, the line looks like it's going downwards, okay? It's going downwards, okay? That's why its slope is negative, okay? And I apologize that my handwriting is a little atrocious here. Okay, let's take a look at another problem here, okay? I think I scrolled it down. Let me go in and copy paste it. We got another graph, okay? We got another graph. First thing I would tell you to do when looking for the slope formula, well, write the slope formula. When we're looking for slope, we got to write the slope formula. It's change of y over change of x or rise over run. But the real formula, the one that we use to put numbers in, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's what it is. That's what it's going to be, okay? Let's go on and take a look at our graph here, okay? They gave us a point. They gave us some points, and I hope you guys could come up with these points also. So notice we have negative 2, negative 3. Well, if we start at the origin, we would move two spaces to the left. Maybe you can see 1, 2, right? We move 2 to the left, and because it's negative, and then we would move down 3. 1, 2, 3. That's my first point, negative 2, comma, negative 3, okay? So what I recommend we do, we turn that straight up into a table, okay? It really helps us out when we take our graph and turn it into tables, okay? We got negative 2 goes with negative 3. Okay, we also have another point here. We got another point, and you can see it's already given to us. Now, honestly, they're not always going to be given to us, but we could find that point out also by just looking at the coordinate grid. Notice it's we counted three to the right, one, two, three, and then we had to count one up. That's just what it is, okay? So the next point here will be three comma one. Once we're able to get those numbers, we could go ahead and start labeling x1, x2, y1, y2, and we could start putting them in the formula, okay? So remember the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's go ahead and do it. My y2 in this problem is going to be the number 1 minus. My y1 in this problem is going to be negative 3. My x2 in this problem is going to be 3, and my x1 is going to be negative 2, okay? So I hope you saw what happened, okay? I had to put y2 minus y1. But on both of these, we see this double negative thing going on here. So we're going to change those double negatives into a positive, okay? So really, it's going to be 1 plus 3, 3 plus 2. And we could do the math. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 2 is 5. The slope is four-fifths. And let's see it in action, okay? Let's see it. Let's prove that it's four-fifths. Notice, if I start down here, I have to count up one, two, three, four. I had to plus four for the rise. I had to count upwards four. But notice, I also have to move to the right. Notice, I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, plus five. That's my run, and you could see it right here. So that's a little quick little tips on how to find the slope when given a graph, all right? So we'll go ahead and stop recording here, and hopefully, you know, we have a great day, okay? Hopefully this kind of helps out, okay? Have a good one.